Hey folks, Chris Martin here. We're doing the recap of World Diplomacy Championships at Weasel Newton, Chicago, and we are up to spring of 1904, or more properly, the winter of 1903. Uh, as we look at the map here, we see that England had a build, and he probably wanted to build Fleet London, but because he covered it, moving Wales to London in the fall, he built a fleet in Edinburgh. Uh, Germany has a removal. This is a tough removal. He's got three armies and two fleets, and he decides to pick up one of the fleets, uh, probably trying to signal to England that he'd like to work with him, especially after Nathan snuck into the Ruhr. Then in the south, after Italy took Trieste from Austria, he builds another army in Venice. So now he's three armies and two fleets. Um, <clears throat> this is a signal that he intends to keep Trieste. Uh, before we move into the negotiations, let's recall that the only reason that Peter in Austria has this army in Serbia is that he retreated there in the fall after having a self-bounce between Budapest and Trieste, which was illegal. He should have either had to retreat to Albania, or when he did retreat to Serbia, that unit should have been annihilated, and he'd be playing with just these two armies of Bulgaria and Greece. So we caught up with Peter right after this. Let's take a look at that. How do you, how do you feel about getting uh, that retreat to Serbia not called as illegal? Oh, jeez. I just bounced it. <laughs> well, that looks like genuine surprise to me. I think it was an honest mistake. Let's take a look now at Peter negotiating with Chris Brand. He's got a, a tough situation here. He could be really upset that Chris took Trieste from him, but that's not necessarily a productive uh, way to behave in these kind of negotiations. Sometimes you just have to roll with it and move on, especially given that he's not going to take it back from Chris at this point. And if he fights, he's essentially saying, well, you know what? I'm not going to win it, and neither are you. And, I mean, he could drag them both down together, but that's not how Peter plays it. Let's take a look at what happens in that next negotiation. I can't give you more than that. I can't give you more than that. You can't. You won't. Right. And if you want that, just tell me, and I'll do that too. So I think it's great for us working together, but I will walk out of Greece too. Okay? Let's do it. I hear it's obviously game to come. Okay. All right. We're just going to score a book here. I know that you're going to help us. Serbia's wrong. Yeah, yeah. I won't touch it. I won't touch it. I won't touch it. Okay. You're okay with this plan, right? I'm okay with this plan. Okay. All right. I know. I'm appreciate it. I assume you'd like to help me hold the cards. Of course. Yes. No, that's a no-brainer. So you see Peter is working, Chris, and saying, look, I can't give you more than I've given you. I could give you Greece. You'd be at seven, I'd be at four. But then we couldn't work together. And, and you know, that's what Peter's been trying to spin, is this we are working together plan. Um, and you know, Chris Brand is saying, look, I'm going to hang on to Trieste. And, and Peter's like, of course you are. I'm not going to try and take Trieste back. Let's focus on killing Dave Maletsky. Speaking of Dave Maletsky, uh, we had a chance to catch up with him uh, in this negotiation period and get his take on what's happening on the board. So let's hear what Dave has to say. All right, Dave Maletsky, it's now spring of 1904. Uh, you're down on three. Uh, what's going on on this board? Um, well, in my theater, uh, Austria has attacked me relentlessly every turn of the game. Um, and that's Peter. Um, right, yes, Russia. Um, Andrew Goff has um, tried tried to work with me early. I went against him one turn, trusting Peter. Um, nothing happened, and then uh, Andrew also uh, supported Peter into me. Okay. Um, and then the final uh, piece of the puzzle is Chris Brand in Italy, who um, went over there, but now is going to greatly profit by taking a bunch of Austrian centers instead right. of mine. And I will probably finish the game at three or four, but um, if I am able to promote uh, the Italian growth because he's been a friend to me, then uh, so much the better. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, do you see anything in the West that strikes you as interesting? Doug Moore um, getting taken down a peg yes. here, Adam and Nathan working together? Uh, I thought Doug made some strange moves early. He vacated Belgium 
for no apparent reason. Couldn't Nathan have forced it? My thinking was he had three on it and Doug only had two, so he just walked um, but, out. But it, it, Silverman was also adjacent to mm. it, and it was as if he had just diplomatically conceded the point. Okay. Um, beyond that, uh, I, don't, I don't know, like it seems to be a straightforward... Uh, um, French English working together with the exception that uh, France is in the English Channel, uh, which I think gives him a better leverage for the end game. Okay, thank you. I think that's a pretty accurate summary from Dave, uh, from his point of view. You know, Peter did attack him relentlessly out of the gate. The one turn that he did trust him and try and work against Goff, Peter didn't follow through, and now Goff has turned on him. And then on the other side of the board, it's France and England working together, but because we've been on the inside of those negotiations, we know that it hasn't been uh, the best of relationships. Let's go ahead and take a look now at the, the fruit of that positioning, because as you recall, uh, English Channel, Mid-Atlantic Ocean for France is a very strong position. It's making England a little uncomfortable in moving forward, and I think right now that's about to start to be a problem for them working together. Denmark, and by going that way, you're in Sweden. I support you in Holland, I take you in. Want to work for you? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You get, you get, you get home, you get whatever happens in Denmark, Denmark or Sweden, they're static. There's no doubt. Why are you nervous? The English are now in basically a mess. We get the France in a position that's going to have the rescue. I get it. Yes, we can. So, in exchange for you tap or Kiel. Well, actually, Doug, if I tap Kiel, Doug, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not doing it. If Doug can take Denmark back on his own protection. It's going to be a in exchange for you maybe losing Denmark, we gain two on him. Well, I. Yeah, the question just becomes at that point if this is the opposite of the second party. But it doesn't matter. Well, but, I'm, but, but you're being the nominee if that's the situation. You still put that back up. You got to leave. Yeah, you got to leave. Anyway, you would have to retreat to the Halloween or Sky. And then you would have to leave. I, I, I want the points. That is the price I will pay to do this. Are you committed to doing this? All right. So I want to break down a little bit what it is that Nathan and Adam are actually proposing to do. Because Adam has some very legitimate concerns about this plan. Let's break it down. Nathan says, okay, Denmark moves to Kiel. Okay, what does that do? That prevents Kiel from writing any support orders. That means that Belgium can support a move from London to Holland, the convoy into Holland, which he refers to, and Burgundy can support Ruhr to Munich, forcing Munich. Now, he could also go Ruhr supports Burgundy to Munich. We don't talk about the exact tactics here. What Adam is saying is, well, look, if I am moving Denmark, then Kiel to Denmark, supported by Baltic, or even Baltic to Denmark, supported by Kiel, will work. And then I have to retreat. And okay, so Nathan's like, oh, you're being super unreasonable about this. You've got, you, you can take it back, or if you don't take it back, you can take Sweden. So let's, let's imagine what happens here. So let's imagine that uh, Doug comes in from the Baltic Sea. Kiel supports Baltic to Denmark. Or, or even the other way around. Kiel to Denmark, Baltic supports that. So now he's got an army here, and he's retreated from Holland, and he's retreated to Kiel. So now, Denmark retreats to Skagerrak. So he's now fleet Skagerrak, fleet Norway, fleet North Sea, and his army is over here in Holland, and the fleets come up to Eddie. What Nathan is arguing is, okay, North Sea cuts Denmark. Right? Skagerrak goes to Sweden, supported by Norway, and you've got it, it's a lock. You can take Sweden. Or Norway cuts Sweden, Skagerrak to Denmark, supported by the North Sea, you take Denmark. But he's ignoring the fact that there might still be this fleet back here in the Baltic Sea that can support either Sweden or Denmark. And Adam's like, yeah, 
this is all great, assuming that Goff still wants to help me. But if Goff becomes like, hey, let's play Balance of Power and let's help Doug, then all of this goes up in a cocked hat. And Nathan, you know, diplomatically minimizes that. And he kind of rolls over that with words and doesn't allow that to be taken as a serious consideration. And Adam's like, okay, look, I'll take this risk if you will move your fleets away from me right now. <clears throat> so that's the trade-off that Adam is playing for. And Nathan, putting that army in Holland surrounded by a bunch of French armies? I don't know about that. And if I'm England, I'm thinking twice about that. And as you'll see later, it turns out that Nathan has a deeper plan. But before we get into that, let's look at the other side of the board. And we've got a, a nice three-party negotiation going on between Russia, Austria, and Italy about the dismantling of Turkey. Let's hear what they had to say. Couple of things going on there. We start out with uh, Andrew saying, "Hey, I've got to pull an army back so I can cover St. Petersburg if I need to." He's recognized that it may well be time for Norway to go to Barents, the army to come over to Norway, and you know he's got. Then he has two on Sweden. He has two on St. Petersburg. England in this position will often decide that it's a lot easier to attack Russia than it is to try and get invested on the continent. So he's preparing to make that move and saying, look, you've got your chance to take a swing at Romania if you want to, because he's going to back Ukraine off. Now, he's not offering to get out of Galicia. Peter doesn't really seem to push the point. The next thing that he asks is he asks for Vienna to go to Bohemia. Now, that is a huge ask in this situation. Why is that? Because if Peter has any kind of unit cohesion at all, it's here in his home centers. If Vienna goes to Bohemia, what is to prevent them, by them, Russia and Italy, from just dismantling him completely? Honestly, there's nothing to prevent that. So it puts pressure on Germany, which is good for, for Russia. And what does Italy have to say? He says, look, Peter, we're good, but we're only good because attacking you right now would annoy Andrew. And we think back to what Doug has been saying. Uh, on the other side of the board, Doug Morris, Germany has been saying Andrew Goff is pulling the strings on this board. He is driving the action, both with Adam and in the South. And here we have just a real tacit sort of uh, appreciation of that by Goff saying, I would probably keep attacking you, Peter, but I don't want to upset Russia right now which is, to me, fascinating, uh, because this position and that build is, says everything about, uh, you know, and the position of these fleets here, it says, I'm going to keep taking Austrian dots. And you heard uh, Dave Maletsky say, yeah, well, he came over here to attack me, but he's really going to profit by attacking Peter. Okay, so that's what happens there. Let's pivot back now and look at Nathan Barnes' conversation with Doug Moore. And what you miss uh, at the very beginning of this video, before I was able to get there with my camera, is Nathan explaining to Doug that Adam is insisting on convoying to Holland. Check it out. Oh, so I'm going to Holland. I can't wait for Holland. It's just I need a guy that doesn't matter. She should be taking sweet and sweet. I'm moving. 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 I
Can we talk for a second about the sheer cunning brilliance of what Nathan has done here? Okay, Nathan says to Adam, if you want to work with me, I absolutely want you to convoy to Holland. Okay. Then he goes to Doug and says, you know, Adam is insisting on convoying to Holland. And if Doug checks with Adam, he's going to get verification on that. Yeah, I'm convoying to Holland. He's going to say, okay. So what does that do to Doug? Doug, that makes him say, ah, oh, I pulled that fleet in the Helgoland Bight. I'm signaling to him, you keep Denmark, right? But let's move on Nathan, who's topping this over here. And so this really puts Doug on tilt a little bit, because the position, like I talked about a little bit earlier, kind of suggests that now is the time to take these two dots. And then you're England, and you own one, two, three, four, and home is seven. You're going to get Berlin and Kiel and uh, Holland and Belgium and Brest eventually, probably, and that ought to be enough to win the world championships. But you got to take those Russian dots now while you have the chance. So Nathan says this to, to Doug, and what does Nathan know? Nathan knows that Denmark should be moving to Kiel. Okay, so if that's the case, Kiel goes to Berlin, Holland goes to Kiel, or, or Kiel gets convoyed to Livonia, if, if Livonia is moving. Um, in any case, the army is going to land in Holland. That's going to support that. He now feels like he can go Ruhr supports Burgundy to Munich, and that's going to work, and that's going to destroy that army in Holland, which is going to make his position so good. This was just a genius turn for Nathan Barnes. Uh, really, really good stuff. On the other side of the board, we got one more conversation between Peter and Chris, talking about the specifics of the plan down here. Now, as you've heard Peter say a couple of times, if a move isn't a guarantee, if it is not, you know, tactically a lock, it makes him very uncomfortable in these negotiations. He feels like it's something that people might not decide to do. If it's tactically a lock, he feels confident that they're going to follow through on their negotiations and take the thing that they can have. In this case, it isn't a lock, and it makes him nervous. Let's check it out. I know you wanted to I'm going. I, you were probably going to take that young guy behind. Yeah. It's, it's not guaranteed, right? Because he's. Um, it's not guaranteed, but I think he's. He thinks Mary's going to do it. Yes, Mary's going to do it. So I'll bounce that. He's, he's got no reason to lie to me, actually. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm going to support you. I want to give two supports to three That's fine. That's fine. I don't think you need to support to make you hear it. Are we all good, gentlemen? Okay, so it looks like the plan is this, is that Aegean is going to go to Khan with Bulgaria's support. Now, Dave Maletsky is probably going to keep going and card to the Black Sea because he doesn't want Russia to get into the Black Sea. So the question is, is Smyrna going to support Constantinople or is Smyrna going to move to the Aegean Sea? Now, uh, Dave's a pretty conservative player. Peter knows this. He's putting his money on Smyrna supports Khan because that's the thing that, that's guaranteed. He can't lose Constantinople this season if he does that. So Peter's thinking, okay, Aegean goes to Khan with support from Bull, and that doesn't work. Okay. Then we've still got this Ionian Aegean thing. The Italian units haven't moved. I've stepped up to Bohemia. What happens next? And he doesn't like the way that looks. And Chris Brand is saying, yeah, you remember that you asked me for Tyrolia supports you know, to Bohemia? I can't do that. I'm going to write two supports here for Trieste. And I don't want that to be a surprise to you. And Goff comes over and, and sort of makes sure that everything's okay and on plan. But Peter knows he's in a tight spot here. Because Chris got that build and put down that army instead of him, he's having to, to be very delicate in his negotiations. He's not negotiating from a position of strength here. He can't say, Chris... That's not going to work. You need to go to the Eastern Med. Because Chris is then incentivized to lie to him if he doesn't want to. And Peter is in no position to do anything about that if he still wants to try and win the World Championships. And Peter really believes that he can still get out and get on top of this uh, as we move forward. Now, two players who don't believe that anymore are Dave Maletsky and Doug Moore in Turkey and Germany. In diplomacy in 1903, 1904, you realize you're probably not going to win this game. You've got to now adjust your expectations and decide on what you want to get out of the rest of it. 
And let's listen to this and see what Doug Moore has to say about, you know, how he thinks it's going to go and what he thinks he's going to do. Well, what do you do? Watch him. I probably right. Adam will do it right. Nice. Barnes gets on. Okay. Adam is like, well, I want to take a holiday. It's like, a holiday would be there for me. Take Sweden and Adam. Right, right. Move on to St. Petersburg, get me right. right. and take these things. Yeah. And he's like, no, he wants well, to take yeah, That's how he plays the game. Yeah. Right. So, I hear you, but. No. Yeah. Can't. Can't change how people play. Nope. So I think what was happening as I walked into that conversation with the camera was that, you know, Maletsky was like, well, you have to choose one of these two guys. You know, what do you think about Adam instead of Nathan? And, and he's like, yeah, I can't. I'd like to choose Adam, but I can't. He's not doing it the right way. And it's really amazing the way Nathan's plan of getting Adam to do something. It's a little suboptimal, right, um, is playing into Doug's mind about how Adam has decided he needs to play this game. Now, in all fairness, Adam could insist, no, thank you, I won't be taking Holland, I'll move on Russia right now. That's another story. Unfortunately, I got to the table a little late for the read. What we miss is Dave Maletsky orders Smyrna to the Aegean, Ankara to the Black Sea, and Constantinople supports Aegean to Bulgaria. Doug Moore orders Munich to Silesia, Kiel to Prussia, Baltic convoys Kiel to Prussia, and Holland to Kiel. So we have that much, and then we get the rest of the orders read. Sebastopol to the Black Sea, Ukraine to Moscow, Romania supports Bulgaria, Galicia to Silesia, Livonia to Prussia, Sweden to the Baltic Sea. Aegean to Constantinople, Ionian to Aegean, Venice supports Trieste, Ionian to Aegean, and Trieste Gold, Tirolia supports Trieste, Vienna to Bohemia, Serbia to Trieste, Budapest to Vienna, Bulgaria supports Aegean to Constantinople, Greece supports Bulgaria. Belgium to Holland. Moore supports Burgundy to Munich. So ordered. Picardy to Burgundy. English Channel to the Mid Atlantic Ocean. Mid Atlantic Ocean to the English Channel. North convoys London to Holland. Edinburgh to the Norwegian Sea. Norway Hull. Denmark to Kiel. London to Holland. Okay, a lot going on there, so let's break it down. In the South, Dave Maletsky indeed had no reason to lie to Chris Brand, but maybe Chris had a reason to lie to Dave, because the move to Constantinople succeeds, and that army is destroyed. There's a bounce in the Aegean. Peter does indeed slide to Bohemia and Vienna. Doug Moore convoys Kiel to Prussia and moves Munich to Silesia. Andrew Goff anticipates this, bounces him in Silesia, bounces him in, him in Prussia, and walks back to Moscow. France, Nathan Barnes, completely bones England here. He lied to him up and down and sideways. He bounces him out of Holland. He forces Munich, and he does not leave the English Channel and the Mid-Atlantic Ocean. So, no net loss for uh, uh, Adam here. He keeps Denmark, but he certainly doesn't get into Holland, and now Nathan is in a real dominant position. Uh, when we process these moves, we see that uh, we have these bounces. We have one retreat, and that is Germany, who must retreat to Belgium, Berlin, rather. So let's adjudicate that. And... This is going to be the board as we go into the fall of 1904. I'll catch up with you then.